able to keep them there when I do the connection, all right? So hold your breath, I'm going to make this connection now. That is going to go to one end of this resistor. There you are. And I take a connection from the other pole of the cell to the resistor. Okay, see what happens to the voltmeter reading? The voltmeter reading now says 4.84 volt. Now what does that mean? Now the cell is now driving a current, this cell is now driving a current in this resistor. Now what the voltmeter reads is the energy used in driving the current through the external resistor. What happens to the rest of the energy? The rest of the energy is used in driving current through the cell. That is what I was telling you. Now, if I remove this connection from the conductor, you can see the voltmeter reading should go back to 5.9. But apparently it didn't because this cell is a very old cell. It takes some time to recover. Now, when I re-establish the connection to the conductor, so you can see what I'm doing, I'm now putting the conductor back in the circuit, the voltmeter reading now dropped. This is now the potential difference between this conductor. So what the voltmeter is now reading is the potential difference between the conductor, which is less than the EMF. All right? I'm going to now explain that on the board. Let's... Um, so, when the voltmeter is connected across the cell, what the voltmeter reads is the EMF. We now say that the cell is in open circuit. It is not driving a current in an external circuit. So, how do you measure the EMF of a cell? connect a voltmeter directly across the cell that will be the measure of the voltmeter will be the EMF when the cell drives a current in an external conductor if you now allow the cell to drive a current in an external resistor like I showed you the voltmeter reading will now be less than the EMF and we now call it the terminal potential difference. The potential difference between the ends of the resistor. So this terminal potential difference V, which is less than E, is a measure of the potential difference between the ends of this resistor. <coughs> if we now consider the current flowing internally, Externally through the conductor and the whole path. We can now <coughs> consider three different circuits. The internal circuit, the current flowing through the cell. External circuit, the current flowing through the external resistor. And then the whole circuit. <coughs> so look at this. I'm going to look at the internal circuit. External circuit, that is through the resistor and then the whole circuit. We can actually summarize the statements about these three different circuits using Ohm's law. Now here, when the cell is connected to a voltmeter without connecting to the external resistor, you see, if this external resistor is not there, the voltmeter will read the EMF. <clears throat> but when you have an external resistor connected, now what the voltmeter now reads is the potential difference between the ends of this resistor. So V is the potential difference that drives current in this external resistor. That means, and E minus V, what does E minus V stand for? E is the EMF of the cell and the EMF is a measure of the total energy the cell makes available to drive current externally and internally.
So E minus V is the potential difference that drives current through the cell. That means the cell has to drive current within itself. And a certain amount of energy is used to do that. And that is E minus V. And E, the EMF, is the potential difference that drives current externally as well as internally. So E is used for external circuit and internal circuit. V is used only for the external circuit. And E minus V is used for internal only. If you notice, if you add V to E minus V, this is external, this is internal, add the external to internal, you get the whole external plus internal. Okay, let's use Ohm's law to express these three situations. If I is the current that a cell drives through the external resistance, so this is the current I that goes through the external resistance, then the same current I will pass through the internal, the pass through internally through the cell as well. Is that right? If a current I passes through the external resistor, the same current will have to pass internally through the cell also. Now, if the cell offers a resistance, well, does the cell offer a resistance? Yes. If the cell does not offer a resistance, then there is no need for spending energy to drive current through the cell. We said E minus V is the energy used for driving current internally through the cell. Now, if an, an amount of energy is needed to drive current internally through the cell, it means the cell offers a resistance for the flow of current. And we are going to represent that resistance offered by the cell by the lowercase r. So distinguish between uppercase r, the external resistance, lowercase r, the internal resistance. All right, now we're going to represent the internal resistance. Look at this. We will put a circle with the symbol of the cell and the symbol for a resistor. And this is the representation for the internal resistance. So the current I flows externally through the uppercase R and internally through the lowercase R, the internal resistance of the cell. And we can now use Ohm's law in both these situations. Let's use Ohm's law to write down equations. For the external circuit, a potential difference V, remember that potential difference V is the potential difference between the ends of this resistor, drives a current I in the resistor R. What is the equation for that? V equal to IR. And this is the equation for the external circuit, for the external resistor. All right, V equal to IR. For the internal circuit, the potential difference that drives current internally is this E minus V. That will drive current a current I through this internal resistance R. And what will be that equation? A potential difference E minus V drives a current I through the internal resistance R. Therefore, we have E minus V equal to I times small r, and that is the equation for the internal circuit. So this is the equation for the external circuit. This is the equation for the internal circuit. And if you add these two, you get the entire internal plus external. Alright, so E minus V equal to IR is for the internal, which I have enclosed in a circle. For the whole circuit, 
the EM of E drives a current I through a total resistance of R plus R. The total resistance for the whole circuit is now R plus R. And that will be E equal to I times R plus R. In fact, if you add equation 1 and equation 2, you will get this. The external circuit, the internal circuit. This is external plus internal. Now, let's uh, divide equation 2 by equation 1. Let's take this equation 2 and divide it by equation 1 and see what we can produce. Look at this. When you divide, this E minus V will be divided by this V. Left side of this equation divide by the left side of that equation will be equal to I times small r divided by I times big R. So E minus V over V equal to I times small r divided by I times capital R. And now I and I will cancel. The left side can be written as, look at the way I'm going to simplify this. This will be E over V minus V over V. That means E over V minus 1 equal to cancelling I's gives you R over R. And I can now obtain an equation for the internal resistance of the cell. Therefore, the small r equal to this big R multiplied by E over V minus 1. And this is an equation that will help you to calculate the internal resistance of the cell. Now, what do you do to do that? First of all, exclude the, internal, the, the, the external resistor. First, connect the cell directly to the voltmeter without any external resistor. Measure the EMF E. Then, connect an external resistor R and then you know the, volt, the voltmeter reading will go down. That is your V. Measure V and you can use those values to calculate the internal resistance of the cell. In fact, if you come to do a lab here, we will be measuring the internal resistance of a cell in the lab. Using this formula, we can measure the internal resistance of this cell well, although it is written here as the battery, the internal resistance of this cell can be measured. Now watch. This is a switch. If you open the switch, then the external resistor is excluded. The reading of the voltmeter then will be the EMF. So, if you now, the voltmeter reading when the switch is open, is the EMF. That means that is the total energy available for current to flow internally and externally. And now if you close the switch, the current is now flowing externally. What will the voltmeter read? The voltmeter will then read the V, the energy used for driving current externally. And now if you know the value of this R, when you do it in the lab, in place of the lamp here, we will be using a known resistor. So you know the value of this R. We have measured E, the EMF of the cell. We measured V, the terminal potential difference when the cell drives a current through a known resistor R. We can calculate the internal resistance as R equal to the external resistor multiplied by EMF divided by the terminal voltage, that is this V, minus 1. Well, I'm going to stop this part of the lesson here. We will do some problems using these concepts and then talk about another concept, which is the energy in an electrical circuit in a third part of this lesson. All right?